And he said to me at the end, Mr. Politician, what can you do for me? I said, what do you want? He said, I'm a goat farmer. I had 21 hybrid goats that I got the highest price for. I was going to get it up to about 60 or 70 goats, and then I'd be able to start paying down on a piece of land for myself and the house. The hurricane wiped out the 21 goats. What can you do for me? I couldn't do anything for him. But his face is always before me. Because he's only one of millions of people who live in Latin America and the Caribbean who try their best. He went to an agricultural training institution and he came out, borrowed some money, and it was all wiped out. And there is nothing that the state has that can solve his problem at the moment. Probably our countries that do. I would hope that we dedicate ourselves to ensuring that when these things happen, which they do, with global warming they're going to continue to do, with climate change, they will continue to happen, that we have mechanisms as they do in other countries. I want to say that one size does not fit all. Latin America has seen significant agro successes in the recent past. The success of Chile in becoming a world leader in fruit and wine production, Brazil's dominance of sugar, citrus, soya, and meats, the Dominican Republic increasing worker productivity by over 100 percent between 1990 and 2003, shows that we have the technical capacity. Of course, we know that the alluvial plains and the volcanic highlands of the region have maybe the most fertile lands on the planet. But are we addressing the real issues? Most of our successes are in large, that is, over 500 hectare farms. But a 500 hectare industrial unit is totally different from a 5 hectare unit. The question is that in countries in the Mediterranean, which are hot, Jordan, Egypt, Israel, Cyprus, Switzerland, the Netherlands, they have farms of 5 hectares, 10 hectares, which operates to make those farmers successful. They go to university and go back to six or seven hectares of land. And they live a rural life, as they have for years. We only seem to have one model. 10,000 acres of land or 1,000 hectares with huge machines working on planes. And that's a good model. It is the best in the world, uh, if you have that. But we don't have that. And we are not producing models um, that we want. Now, what do we want? We want mechanical small tools for hillsides and for small farms. We want a sustainable pasture legume. All the pastures of the world in the temperate zones have a sustainable legume. We do not have one in the tropics. And if you don't have it, you keep on importing vast quantities of protein supplement, which means that you are basically working for the people who sell protein, uh, soya, meal, or whatever. We want to solve the, the problems of diseases of the hot, humid tropics. The, those diseases are sometimes the same as the ones in the temperate lands. Like, for instance, early blight and late blight, which wiped out the tomato crops in some parts up here three weeks ago. But they were able to resolve it. It wasn't a big problem. It was a little, a little part of the newspapers that I read. When I read the entire article, it said that it was my old enemy, Phytophthora, right up here, but totally under control. Throughout the tropics, Phytophthora is not under control. It wipes out. The only answer we have for it is to rogue. That is to say, go through, destroy everything and burn and start all over again. Madness. So we want to have bioenergy systems which would allow energy independent farms uh, because we have a lot of uh, sun and, and light. We want to have mini irrigation systems to meet the biennial sharp drought periods. They come every year. Not a drought, it's our, it's our natural climate and we are not meeting it. We want 
knowledge sharing of age-old soil pets uh, uh, and which cause a problem to integrate traditional knowledge which oftentimes tells us what were the problems that other people have to integrate that with the more modern technology and finally we want to have community organizations which will allow economies of scale for the provision of facilities which Dr. Brathwaite spoke about not merely just producing food but going right through the chain and dealing with the selection grading packaging distribution and marketing of fresh produce and processing of other uh, types of uh, products to produce a large range of products. Uh, I think if we have those things solved, we will be able to produce a Latin America of which we can all be proud, where people don't have to run into the cities, they can stay in their communities uh, in the countryside, which are the communities that have produced our culture, which are the, the, the communities from which our music and our art forms come, which are what we are proud of. But we are killing that by killing the economic base. And the economic base of the countryside is agriculture.